Kennedy Peterson, and we've all seen me in this position before. No sock on my foot, and the sock being used to draw on a predator. Check this out. Oh, that right there is a baby red fox. Something. Working with animals can be incredibly difficult, especially when you are hoping to encounter them in the wild and have an up-close interaction that is captured on camera. The crew and I have visited many locations over the course of filming Breaking Trail, and if you have ever wondered which location has been the most difficult so far, I would definitely have to say it was Alaska. This far northern state is considered to be the last true frontier, and trust me when I say, the environment posed incredible challenges. From the vast lakes, which we explored by kayak, to the rushing glacial melt streams that were nearly impossible to forge without getting soaked by icy cold water. Then there were the incredibly dense forests. Built with ancient trees and thick plants, this habitat provided the perfect hiding places for native wildlife. So I climbed up on top of this stump here, searching the forest. Check out this vantage point. Wow, that is just trees as far as the eye can see. So what becomes the game plan when finding animals in the wild is next to impossible? Simple, we work with ones that have been rescued or raised in captivity. Today we will be working at Steve Kroeschel's Wildlife Sanctuary, which is home to many different mammal species, including moose, weasels, and even a wolverine. In my opinion, mammals are the most difficult animals to work with because they very rarely want to be held and getting them to sit still for the cameras is next to impossible. And while in the past I have worked with giant grizzly bears, ferocious badgers, and spring-loaded bobcats, nothing would challenge me and the crew more than an incredibly adorable baby red fox named Lupin. Now one of the toughest things about working with a fox is that a fox wants to move around as much as possible. So right now we are inside of Lupin's enclosure and you can see this looks completely natural. You can barely even tell that we're in her enclosed environment. And here she comes, Lupin. <coughs> She's very excited to have us in here. Come here, come here you. As soon as she starts to calm down, I have a good feeling that she'll probably come close for the cameras, but at the moment we have to let her get acclimated to us being in here. There you are. Are you gonna come hang out with me? Right about now I am sure you are wondering, what in the world are those noises Coyote is making? <laughs> well, they're fox calls that Steve taught me. You see, Steve has the uncanny ability to speak with animals. Now Steve, yeah. I hear you making this noise. It sounds, like, sounds like a turkey noise. Yeah, well, I'm talking uh, mink language now. That's mink. Yeah, yeah, mink language. You go ahead and try it. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna go faster, there you go. Pretty good, pretty good. And he said that if I could master the language of the fox, I would likely become one of the skulk, which is a group of foxes. There you are, hello. You have a good sprint? What do you think? How about you and I have a conversation about your 12 vocal calls? I know you have 12 things to say to me. My fox lingo was a bit off, so then we tried a fox toy. Just a simple duck wing tied to a stick. That is what you call fishing for a fox right there. Oh, he almost had it. I'm doing my best to keep her attention. Hi, good, good afternoon. Keeping a fox's attention in front of a camera is far easier said than done. And before we knew it, Lupin was back to running laps around her enclosure. Hey, Lupin, come on back here. Next, we tried to get her up close to the cameras by pretending my hand was a mouse. What I'm gonna do right now is turn my hand into a mouse. I'm gonna actually put it down in this hole and bury it in the grass, try to make some mouse noises, rustle this around, and see if I can get Lupin to come and pounce on me. You ready? Yep. Let's try this. Oh, yep, 
it worked. <laughs> Ow. And she bit right down on the tip of my finger, only to find that it isn't actually a mouse. Well, that was pretty cool. All right, well, apparently I can speak mouse. Haven't quite yet learned how to speak fox. We had some pretty good success at first, until she figured out that she couldn't eat my fingers. <laughs> how cool is that? Every single time she thinks my finger's a mouse. And that's such a great hunting instinct for this baby animal, to be able to learn that this is how I catch mice. It is very, very difficult to hold onto this baby fox because she wants to run around in the enclosure. So one tactic I used with the ocelot was to take my sock off and get its attention with that. Kick, 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 kick. Loop it. Here we go, she's got her attention. Oh boy, look at that. Oh, sock is good. It worked wonders with the ocelot in Costa Rica, so I figured, why not try it with a fox? Get that sock. Now, if I was one of her litter mates and I found something out there in the wild, like a hunter who left a sock behind, this would be a great toy to play with. This fox is incredibly playful, and at this age, that's natural. But even adult foxes, you'll see running around out in fields, prancing, hopping, playing fun games. Anything that she can potentially get her claws and her teeth on is fair game. And while tug of war seemed to hold her attention at first, like any curious baby animal, she soon lost interest and went back to going everywhere except in front of the main camera. Mario, you made a buddy. <laughs> For me? You're so cute. You're such a cutie. Well, she's over there rolling around on her back with Mario, and he's got that big fuzzy microphone on the front of his camera, and I think she's attracted to either shininess of the lens or the microphone cover. It's almost impossible to keep her in one spot. I'm gonna put my boot back on, and one of my favorite things to do with the animals that we work with is to actually follow them around with a GoPro camera. So I've got the GoPro set up on a gimbal, and let's see if we can track down the baby red fox. Ready? The red fox is one of the most elusive animals in the world. And I would say in my lifetime, I've probably only ever seen five fox in the wild. And even when you do see them, it's only for a brief second. So if you do happen to encounter a fox, consider yourself lucky. This right here, getting to play with the baby one, whew, it's absolutely exhausting. If there's one animal that has really worn me out, it is definitely the baby red fox. This thing's got more energy than any animal we've ever worked with. For nearly 15 minutes, we attempted to follow Lupin around her enclosure. And for a brief moment, she rolled over on her back for a belly rub. Well, there she goes. That's about the closest we've been all day. Pretty cool, palling around with a baby red fox. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave. Stay wild, we'll see you on the next adventure. Like I said in the beginning, filming with mammals is incredibly difficult. And after two hours of following this fox in circles, the crew and I called it a wrap. Getting to pal around with Lupin was one of my fondest memories from Alaska. And if there's one thing I'm confident we can all agree on, it's that this baby fox is about as adorable as it gets. If you thought using a sock to play with a fox was savvy, make sure to go back and see how well this tactic worked when I got up close with a wild ocelot. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.